Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's just look at an interesting URL, which is this, and it is also a valid URL. In this video, we'll actually learn about how URLs work and how and why is this a URL, which is a legit URL. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So let's start with a valid URL, which you will understand. For example, something like this. And I'll compare this URL with the invalid looking like URL URL, but it's actually a valid URL and let's see how this works. Let's just work on a one-on-one -on -one comparison and try to understand why this URL is leg legitimate and why this one, which looks like an invalid URL, is also a valid one. The URL start with a scheme, the HTTPS or HTTP or FTP or, you know, SSH or anything, right? So these URLs, all the URLs start with a scheme, which is a protocol, which is almost like a language that how you have to communicate with the server. Is it English? Is it Hindi? Is it Arabic? It's some other language. That is the analogy. So in this case, HTTP in this URL is a scheme which is okay, which makes sense, just like HTTPS is a scheme right here. So this part is sorted for us, right? We understand what this is. The next thing is a little bit interesting for people who have not seen authentication within the URL structure itself. You might have seen that or might not have seen that if you have, let's say, set up some SSH repos or HTTPS repos through Git and GitHub. So Git and GitHub sometimes tell you to include your credentials, username and password in the URL itself, right? So the way this works, let's say if I was using Twitter in an authenticated mode, I would add my username, then a colon, and then a password, and then I add the red symbol. So this is a structure where you can specify username and passwords in your URL as well, right? Your protocol, then your username, separated with a colon, and then a password, and then an add the red symbol, right? So this structure right here is your authentication information. If we compare it over here, you're gonna see that this right here is the username, HTTP, that's it. And this right here is the password. This particular block is the password, two slashes, then HTTP, then colon, then two slashes. How do I know this? Because the username is separated with a colon and the password is separated with the add the rate symbol. Then we have the host name. In this case, we have twitter.com. In this case, we have HTTP. Right now, this is almost similar to like if you would write localhost, you know, you can visit localhost and that's a single keyword. These twitter.com things or anything, these are live websites. But HTTP is also a valid host name because you can configure this to let's say fall back to localhost only, right? So you have your protocol, you have your username, then you have your password right here with you and then you have a host name. Now, what is this colon about? Well, you see that when you are accessing twitter.com, what you are actually accessing is twitter.com on port number 443. Why? Because HTTPS by default works on port number 443. HTTP by default works on port number 80, right? So if we go ahead and try to see it again, this is our URL, this is our protocol scheme. This is our username. This right here is our password over here. This is our host name and this colon over here denotes the port number, right? But because this port number is missing, we have not written 80 over here. Browsers and any, any client which is performing this network request will fall back to the 80 port number itself because you're using HTTP. So not specifying a port number here is just a trick to, you know, just use HTTP and a call. That is why this makes it a valid URL. This is also the same thing. And this is also the same thing. It will be treated as the same, except for some same origin policy things. But you get the idea that what this empty port number or empty column denotes, it denotes an 80 in front of it, which the browsers will automatically assume. Then the next things, these next things are a little simple to understand because now your actual URL starts, the actual path name. So these are just double slashes, right? I think we were here, not there. So these are just double slashes and this is the path, right? So just like badger and status and this number is the path. This is also over here is a path, right? So this, you're just visiting a path somewhere on the website. Then you have a question mark and then the query parameter. You know, we have seen how query parameters work, key and value, something like this, but you necessarily don't have to specify this equal to value thing within your query parameter, right? You can just keep it key. And in this case, our key is this whole particular thing right here. And finally, you have a hash symbol, which can basically just take, you know, just any value. You can pretty much put anything over here. And this is not sent to the server. 
this is just browser specific anchor text thing right the the hash of the url that's it so basically if you take a look this in itself is a full structure of a url anything and everything that can be included in a url is included in the string protocol the authentication information the domain the port number the path the query parameter and the hash of the url that is exactly what this url is also all about just with the difference that it just uses http a lot right and you can just verify if this is an actual url or not by saying url is new url in javascript construct and you can see that javascript actually parses this as an actual url mind you that javascript does not parse any and every url as a valid url you can see that will throw error it would it has actually otherwise you know just parsed it as a valid url that is why this url is functional that is why you can technically even start a http server on your local host and send a fetch request or a curl request or anything so yeah that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you understood something new something interesting about urls that is all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next one really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of codedamps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching